Baba Shweb, the correctional officer, born in Accra, Ghana, a Quranic researcher and a critical thinker based on religion, who does online lectures based on the guidance of the Quran on platforms such as Facebook, YouTube and TikTok since 2018, in Finland, and 13 years, QBE, in Classical Arabic and MSA in Quranic Arabic. The author of the Refer to the Quran which helps every novice to understand the steps towards understanding the great Quran and the guidance of God in it. Baba Shuaib, the correctional officer, born in Accra, Ghana, a Quranic researcher and a critical thinker based on religion, who does online lectures based on the guidance of the Quran on platforms such as Facebook, YouTube and TikTok since 2018, in Finland, and 13 years, QBE, in Classical Arabic and MSA in Quranic Arabic. The author of the Refer to the Quran which helps every novice to understand the steps towards understanding the great Quran and the guidance of God in it. There is no Shia Sunni in Islam, and there is no sect in Islam. The Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 159, O Prophet, anyone who makes division, who makes sex in the religion of Islam, you have nothing to do with him. There is no Shia Sunni in Islam, and there is no sect in Islam. The Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 159, O Prophet, anyone who makes division, who makes sex in the religion of Islam, you have nothing to do with him. There is no Shia Sunni in Islam, and there is no sect in Islam. The Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 159, O Prophet, anyone who makes division, who makes sex in the religion of Islam, you have nothing to do with him. There is no Shia Sunni in Islam, and there is no sect in Islam. The Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 159, O Prophet, anyone who makes division, who makes sex in the religion of Islam, you have nothing to do with him. There is no Shia Sunni in Islam, and there is no sect in Islam. The Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 159, O Prophet, anyone who makes division, who makes sex in the religion of Islam, you have nothing to do with him. There is no Shia Sunni in Islam, and there is no sect in Islam. The Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 159, O Prophet, anyone who makes division, who makes sex in the religion of Islam, you have nothing to do with him. <coughs> I'm sorry, but can anyone... Salam, <clears throat> alaikum, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> hey, Munir, Munir Al Badawi, I see you, bro. Yeah, I went. I went back to my old days. Yeah, this is the way I used to appear normally on my programs uh, before the cap thing came. So maybe many people thought oh, I'm, I'm becoming bald headed. So I need to go back to the old fashioned style. But I'm still the correctional officer, though, Baba Shrive here. Yeah, so thank you all, ladies and gentlemen. Salam alaikum, peace be upon you all. Uh, this is Baba Shrive, the correctional officer. Uh, let me see the lights if they are okay. Um, yeah, one love to you, Yusuf Sahid, brother. Uh, let me see which of the lights will be better. Is it this one? I think this one is okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so thank you all, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm streaming live from Facebook, YouTube, and then TikTok simultaneously. Right? Uh -huh. Thank you all for coming. Um, Yes, Brother Shaheen, I see you. Salam to you. Uh, 
Uh, Real Islam says, but, but brother, but that hat is actually for Judaism. Uh, well, that's your opinion. <laughs> that is your opinion. The hat is part of uh, adornment. You can dress as long as it doesn't go against God. If if God says it's haram, I'll, I'll put it aside. There's no way in the Quran it says wearing the cap is haram. Right? Uh -huh. If it fits you, wait. Uh -huh. So, assalamu alaikum, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Correction Officers page, the Baba Shribe. Uh, let me give some shout outs to those on Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. I see Abdullah Abbas, Hannah Banana, Sister Hannah Banana, I see you. Um, Mishizi Sniper, Tariq Ayub, uh, Samhing, uh, LS4, New Path Nuri 10, uh, Real Islam, Chaterko, Brother Munir, I see you, Michael Flesher, Abu Sise. Abu Sise, I see you, uh, MW Content, uh, Quran Alone is Truth, uh, Mam Lies Jase, I see you, Salam, brother. Uh, Dangana, I see you, Salam. Uh, yes, Sister Sana, I see you, Salam to you, Sister Sana Al Juharni. I see my Kadago Tajuddin. Uh, Salis, I see you, Salam, Jimmy. Um, brother Munir, yes, I see you. Um, Nazir Enesi, yes, I see you. Oscar Sanya. Yes, I see you. Uh, brother Omar uh, Sataur, I see you. Ola, yeah, brother Ola, I see you. Akim. Um, OMS uh, Jabang, yes. Nara Pawa, I see you. Uh, brother Yusuf Saheed, yes. Uh, Ahmed ZJ says, where is the cup? <laughs> I intentionally did it this style. I know people will miss the cap because I've been doing using it consecutively for like six months, right? So I intentionally did it this way. Um, Wadata GH, yes, salam to you. Kwame Ousu, Marwan Divaj, I see you. Um, let me see. Abubakar Bangura. Uh, now, Sister Naz Khan, I see you. Salam to you. Mm. Uh, Sister Hannah Banana says, Baba Shribe, how can I join your WhatsApp group? Uh, if you have my phone number, yeah, if you have my phone number, my correctional officer phone number, kind, kindly send me a message. That That is it below the page. Send me the message and uh, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so, uh, yes, Sister Hannah, yeah. Uh, we have BM8C7. Yes. Salam to you. Mo Kelsin Adams. I see you. Salam. Um, so Maya. I see you. Uh, Rashid. Rashid Sobriety. Uh, brother Kamal. Uh, Badesen. I see you. Long time, brother. Um. Wow, wow, the list is getting bigger. Uh, uh, brother Ola, <clears throat> yes, I didn't get the time actually. This, I think, from last week, I didn't actually get the time to go through my, my correctional officer's number, right? So, I, I, I just got the chance to answer some few people's messages, uh, but I'll try my best to go through it. I, because I was busy, so I couldn't get the time to. Because I don't like the idea of attending to people's message and I don't have the time to answer. So that is why I, I didn't go through. Uh, so I prefer when I go through your message and I can give you a response if there be the need. Right. So I will do that, inshallah. I think I have a, a, over. I have over 90. <laughs> over 90 on 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 respond like messages have not responded to yet right uh it's, it's never an easy deal uh i've taken it upon myself uh to, to do to do the best i can so inshallah we'll get back to everybody uh M smd yes salam uh that zxd says baba shaiv abs haram 
uh, beer, beers as in this, or beers as in uh, drink, or which, which, what, what beers do you mean? And um, beers as in like drink, right? Is that what you mean, right? Uh -huh, because I just want to get it because sometimes the spelling can be, yeah, the person intends this and it spells it this way. So, but I'll, I'll start, I'll go to the question and answer session. I will answer questions. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Salam Baba Sidu, I see you. Salam to you. Um, yes. Uh, somebody is saying, can everybody join the WhatsApp group? Uh, not not necessarily everybody, because sometimes I have to do some screening first. Because uh, in the beginning, when the WhatsApp group started, because we had people who are not in the right uh, mind frame or right, you know, they, they, they are chaotic. They keep bringing some nuisance. So usually I have to screen, like be in touch with the person one or two before I allow you into the group, right? Uh, uh, yes, Salam, Sister Raf. Uh, I see you. Uh, Raf, I see you. Uh, Sana says, at content, okay. Wow, the list is getting bigger, right? Uh, yes, Brother Munir, yeah. Uh, Isa Shamo, I see you. Salam, bro. Uh, Sister Diana, I see you. Yes. Uh, Brother Tadzi says drink. Yes, let me pin your message. I'll, I'll come back to it, right? Um, yes, the, 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 the audience, the number of audience is growing. I appreciate that. It shows that we are moving in the right direction, right? Mm -hmm. there, of course, there will be some differences along the way, but if you understand that the differences are just minute, the main focus is to stick to the book of God, right? And come together. Right? And we stick to the rope of God together, right? Minor differences, they are allowed. Even in a family, a father can disagree with the son, a son can dis disagree with the mother, a sister can disagree with the father, it is normal. But that doesn't mean they become enemies just because there's disagreement. You understand? This is this is the psychology you need to understand. And this is this is why somebody like me can can be in peace with uh, with our elder uh brother Hamza Malik. I can be in peace with brother Moses PhD. I can be in peace with uh you name mentioned him Anwar Sheikh and so on, right? differences to have minor differences is okay so far as our the core of our message is one goal one focus that is what matters it's just like mathematics when you have different formulas to the same answer right do is different formulas to the same answer you don't just say just because this guy has a different formula to mine so he's my enemy gone are the days i've seen some foolish people who call themselves quran alone followers will be insulting me baba shrive like i'm like why? He says, because he's doing ritual salat. Why? Why don't you come and sit me down and see if I can embarrass you or not? <laughs> you understand? You just said, agree with me on particular thing and then that's it. You tag me, the devil, Satan. He says, oh, he's a devil. He says, Satan, don't follow Baba Shribe because he's doing ritual salat. So he's going to hell. No. What? What? So your emotional thoughts, you didn't leave them back in the, your mushrik state when you were joining the Quran alone movement. You just brought it with you. So if you disagree with somebody on something, does it. <laughs> you tag him as a devil. <laughs> but anyways, insult doesn't get to me, Baba Shrab. You know, uh, if, you're, if you're willing to lead people out of darkness into the light, you are the people's main target. And it's always the case, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so thank you all for coming, Tom Johnson, uh, Genius TVGH. Yes, you are welcome. Uh, Mohammed Al Hajj Wangara. Yes, I will, I'm, I'm I'm tagging all the questions you are asking. I will come back to it, inshallah. Abdul Kudus, I see you. Yes, uh, Ibrahim Sumail, I see you. Hey, Ismail. Um, MW content is asking, are you a messenger, Rasul? I'll come back to your question. Please, guys, like the page, help it to grow. I appreciate that, uh, Samhin. Wow. So this is just the salam I'm sending, and it's just 15 minutes over, right? 
wow s faraj rishi green um uh we have uh ak cup and so on and so forth i appreciate that thank you all for coming for those on tiktok i see you brother shaheen i see peacemaker i see prince jojo uh i see um what do we have i see n i see uh osibojata um i see sami rashi a uh, brother uh, brother sami rashi salam to you i think you sent me a message i couldn't get the chance to read your message i, I I'm, I'm sure i saw a message from you brother brother sami right uh, i apologize for that but i think i gave you my other phone number try to send me the message there because there i can check frequently uh, with my correctional officer number, I only check when I have free time, right? Yeah. So, salam to all those who are here and those who are coming later. Brother Malik, Malik Satina. Yes, thank you for coming. Truth North, uh, Nairobi. Uh, thank you. I appreciate the, the support and your presence. God bless you all, right? Uh, I see you, Mawia. Yes, salam to you. I see you. Uh, I mean, Lion. Yes, I see you, bro. You're welcome. So thank you. I apologize in case I am not able to mention your salams. I apologize, right? Uh, Brother Zico, thank you all for coming. I apologize if you come in later, I couldn't mention you because I can't. Um, I didn't come here only to, to give shout outs to people, right? I just feel the need that it's, it's good for me to mention people, right? As, as Because the more we grow, the more bigger the platform becomes, it, it is good to apply to appreciate the presence of people and then actually mention people who actually contributed in getting this to become a bigger platform. So this is why I've taken the need to actually give this the shout outs, right? So God bless you all for, for being present, right? Okay. Uh, it's not time for calling yet. If it's time for calling, I will let you know. So I only put up the number because there was one sister who needed it. But <clears throat> let, me, let me tackle one or two questions that are thank you uh, brother n for the gifts on tiktok uh, ibrahim mohammed you're welcome salam uh, let me tackle one or two questions i've been asked last week and i couldn't tackle them when i ended the program right so i'm going to tackle those few questions then i'll give the chance for q and a session right q and a i'll give the chance where you can call or you can type and i can see it right and it doesn't matter to me whether you know, uh, uh, you are a newcomer or old comer. So far as the question will benefit the audience, yes, I'm in for it. I can tackle it so far as I see it, right? However, those who call directly will be given the priority over those just typing. But however, the questions I've, I've pinpointed uh, on the sidebar, I will make sure I address them before I end, inshallah, right? Okay. So uh, I came about, somebody sent me the video, uh, uh, something of a particular clown, and I just want to help the clown out. That Baba Shribe, the reason why they call me the correctional officer is for a reason. If you have a shallow mind and you don't understand what I'm here to do, then, uh, excuse me to say, you are fooling yourself, right? If you are emotional, stay away from my page. And if you think the things I do, I don't have justifications for it, or I don't have answers to the things I do, uh, then you are way backwards in your thoughts. And as a matter of fact, my phone number is always there, right? I'm not, I'm not running away. Neither am I here to mislead the people. That's the point. So let me, let's see one embarrassment of this guy uh, who has to be taken back to school. And I need to do that for him, right? Uh, I did a video on Zakir Naik, right? To show you the, to expose the kind of, uh, the the how they misconstrue or interpolate or say things which are not found in the book of God, but yet they will tell you it's from God while it is not from God. So God says, Quran chapter 3, verse 78. Though they will say a lie about God while they know. So this is why I expose scholars, I expose them, right? So now if you are uh, an amateur. And you think you can just, you know, get at Baba Shrive, you're fooling yourself. Because let me show you the difference. There's a difference between a primary 
uh, a student at a primary level, which is elementary level, and a student which is at the secondary level, and a student which is at the university level. There's always different in perspective and understanding and knowledge. So things that might sound like a contradiction or a mishap to somebody in elementary school, that same knowledge will not sound will not be a contradiction in the secondary level. And things that might be that might sound like a contradiction in uh, in the university level, right? It might sound like a contradiction to a university level, might not be contradiction to another level. Do you get a point? Uh -huh. Yeah, thank you, B. Karaga. Okay, so let me play this video and, and show you what people are missing when they're listening to me. That is why when I say when you're listening to me, listening carefully, I keep using this word several times. You see Baba Shraib saying, listening carefully. Because I know there's the sheeple out there. <laughs> you understand? The sheeple, you know them, the mushriks. So when they listen, they don't know how to critically listen to a person. You get the point. Because already they have a preconceived notion of proving Baba Shraib wrong. So they are not willing to take a wisdom or knowledge from Baba Shraib because they hate the personality and whoever I am, entirety. So now I'm going to help you to to see, to decipher and see the problem with mushriks when they listen to me. They lack the wisdom behind knowledge. So check it. Which I need to correct him. Let me let me quote exactly what he said. So he said, um, it has been used as an action, which is a noun. So, so I was talking about Zakir Naik, right? And Zakir Naik mentioned the word Zulafa. So the Zulafa he mentioned, I showed a contradiction, that discrepancy in the statement Zakir Naik made. Remember, he said that Zulafa is, can be used for three or more. But then when he was about to now give us, was Zulafa mean a layl, how many salats were there? Then he says two, two salats. So he mentioned the Zuhur and the what? Isha. If you think I'm lying, go and rewatch the video. It was last week's video, right? You'll be laughing so hard. And that video, I'm going to trim it and I'll put it versus scholars folder on my YouTube. And you are going to, you, you are going to love it. Uh -huh. So then I was trying to show the audience the contradiction b b based on what they see and what is written and what they tell you again. There's mishap. So what I was showing, and that Zulafan he mentioned, he made it into Prura. And he says three or more. So if three or more, then why do you say Wazula for Min and Lail is talking about two salats? Like, again. So you see the contradiction. So then I was helping out, saying that the word Zalafa is a verb. Now in that verse, it was used as Zulafan. So it is used as a noun. So then I say it is an action word. It's an action which is a verb made into a noun. But I think this listener doesn't know that a verb can become a noun and is still an action. <laughs> he doesn't know. <laughs> so he thought I was saying action word. If I was saying action word, I would just say verb. But I said it was a verb made into a noun. So let me, let me help so that when you are listening, especially to knowledgeable and wise people, listen carefully. Because what might sound like a discrepancy or contradiction to you is actually your stupidity making it seem like it's a contradiction. Do you get my point? Okay, so I'm going to show you something. Yes, properly, somebody used the word adverb. And I'll be coming to break down how uh, a noun can be used in the sense of adverbs and so on. But let me, let me, let me play the, this audio. Listen. So to him, the word Zulafan is an action word, okay? So he says to me, the word Zulafan is an action word. That's not how I described it. I gave the breakdown and I said that word Zulafan comes from the word Zalafa, which is a verb, the action word. So then I said the Zalafa, I give the meanings. It can mean approach, it can mean progress, it can mean advance, and so on. So then I said in that verse, it's used as a noun, but it's still an action. It is used as a noun, but it is still an action. So in this action, if you are describing this action, and Zakir Naik is trying to say it has been used in the plural form, 
right, in a plural form. So I was trying to decipher, to show you the discrepancy in the things that Kirnaik was saying. But it seems this listener wasn't paying attention. So listen, he says he's going to correct me, but I'm going to prove him his foolishness. So listen. <laughs> and to him again, the, the word is a noun. So I think he's confused. because. So he says I was confused because he refused to listen that he wasn't paying attention when I was teaching. He forgets that I'm teaching the multitudes of people watching. It's not like I sat in the room talking to two people or three people. Because an action word doesn't mean a noun, right? An action word doesn't mean a noun. An action can be made into a noun. He doesn't know. For instance, the word salat is a noun. As a verb, it's salah. Huh? Salah, as a verb. But it can be made as a noun. Then it has the tau marbut at the end. So it's salat. But it's an action still. So I'm going to show you the definition of a noun. Because this guy doesn't know the definition of a noun. He doesn't know when a verb is made into a noun, it can still be an action, but a noun. He doesn't know that. So let's help him out. Uh, if a word is an action, it means it's a verb. But the word zulafan is not a verb. It's a noun. So then he says, if the word is an action, then it's a verb. But it's a verb is made into what? Uh, a what? Let's repeat. It's not a verb. It's a noun. So it can never be an action. Uh, when the word, the verb becomes a noun, it can never be an action. Listen to what he said carefully. Listen to judgment. This is not maverick. No, this is not maverick. I know maverick. That's not maverick, right? This is one guy from Ghana. His name is Zito. So let me address the guy because the guy is scared to call me for me to bring him on my pl platform. Like, for instance, when I open the phone lines, these same people don't call. <laughs> They are just in the comment section typing. But somebody sent me. So now I'm going to embarrass him with this. So listen. So he made the statement. I'm going to play the statement in full. Now listen. Um, in the video, which I need to correct him. Let me let me quote exactly what he said. So he said, um, it has been used as an action, which is a noun. So to him, the word Zulafan is an action word. Okay. <laughs> and... To him, again, the, the word is a noun. So I think he's confused because an action word doesn't mean a noun, right? Uh, if a word is an action, it means it's a verb. But the word Zulafan is not a verb. It's a noun. So it can never be an action. Uh, Thank you for embarrassing yourself. So let me let me now show you something. Now, what is a noun? Uh, in Arabic, that is ism. So, but what is a noun? We are going to see. Let me help him out. So that uh, he will... Now pay attention carefully when a wise person is speaking, right? So I put it. So ladies and gentlemen, if you have the dictionary next to you, kindly assess your dictionaries. Check the definition of a noun. N-O-U-N. Check the definition. When we say a noun, a content word that can be used, listen carefully. When we say a noun, ism in Arabic, is a content word that can be used to refer to a person, number one. And it can be used to refer to a place, number two. And it can be used to, to refer to a thing, number three. And it can be used to refer to a quality, number four. And it can be used to refer to an action, number five. Second meaning, the word class that can serve as the subject or object of a verb the object of a preposition or in a position. But like I said, when somebody at the university level is saying things, if somebody is at, at the elementary school is now assessing what a university level is speaking about, it might sound like a discrepancy or a contradiction. You understand? Because this person at the elementary school is still learning. <laughs> he doesn't know what is being spoken about. So to him, it sounds like a contradiction or mistake. Right? So for anybody who watched that video of mine clearly, what I was saying on that day, I gave the breakdown where the word Zulafan comes from. The root word is Zalafa. So I say as a verb, this is what it means. So then I said that verb, if we make it into a noun, that is when it becomes the Zulafan. 
but it's an action still. What, what version of English is difficult for you, my guy? Seriously. So you don't know now and now can be used to refer to an action also? <laughs> this is elementary sub topic <laughs> we should be come on baba tribe is beyond that i don't need to be teaching you basics in academics or is it because oh you thought i was embarrassing your scholars like like the doctor yeah <laughs> You understand? So when we say the word salat, uh, salat in the Quran, it's a noun. But it's an action because it's an act. You'll be doing it. You, you are going to use the action to do that act. And it can still be a noun. Because a noun can be used. It's a content word that can be used to refer to an action too. Oh, my God. Oh, where is, where is, uh, where is he? Auntie Brofo. Auntie Brofo. So the guy doesn't understand English. So when they send me that this thing, I just push it aside. I started, I started laughing. I'm like, come, I'm, I'm looking for Zakir Naik's and Mufti Mengs. You are sending me somebody from the gutters of Ghana. Anyways, let's let's move on to, for today. Mm -hmm. So I, I said when you are coming for Baba Shua, be prepared and don't stay far away and throw stones. I live in the metal house. You live in the glass houses. You and your scholars. You live in the. If I throw back, I will smash all your houses. You think I'm joking? Seriously? Do you think Baba Shua is putting the camera on him just to to embarrass himself? Is that what you're thinking, right? You don't know how prepared I am, right? And this is why I'm confidently putting my phone number out there, and I'm daring you guys. Seriously, because I'm going to smash all your idols, including your top scholars. And you you watch it. Mark it on the wall. The time is coming. I will make sure all your scholars stop their nonsensical preachings in the mosques. You will see. Mark it on the wall, inshallah. Uh -huh. Sister Anna says, where's like swimming? If I say swimming is my favorite summer activity, swimming is a now. Exactly. <laughs> swimming is a now, but it does an action. Do you, do you get my point? Yeah. So that word, the verb, which is an action word, if you make it into a noun, it can still be an action because it's just referring to a noun, but still an action. <laughs> oh, my God. You are lucky Salim is still in the elementary school. I will have let him teach you this. <laughs> Salim will teach you easily. And if you refuse, he will give you a slap. Just like uh, Black, Black Sharif said. Touch some boy and slap him. Because you don't want to shut up. I'm looking for your scholars and you are in the gutters of Ghana. You think you can face me. Then if you're a man, call me and see. No, if I dare you, I'll open the phone lines. You mushriks, call me and see. And I'll go to TikTok. Join me there and see. I'll make you famous. You think I'm here to joke? Can't you see your scholars running away from me like donkeys fleeing away from the lion? Mushriks. Okay, let's go on. <clears throat> I love <laughs> That guy is just too zakawai. Okay, so I was asked a question, ladies and gentlemen. Let's not get carried away. I was asking a question. And this question is very, very important, right? So let me address this question. Uh, somebody says we accept Sunnis as mushriks because they bring new rules outside of Quran and attribute it to God. Now, my question is, since Quran alone followers are such a small minority from the so-called Muslim community, how do you explain this verse? Al-Waqiyah, chapter 56, verse 39. Right? So, let me, let me show you something. Then the person says, many... He says, many from the earlier generations and many from the later generations. That is chapter 56, verse 39. Then again, the person says, can you also check verse 13 of the same surah? Give me your opinion. Thanks. You know, many a times I don't like people. Uh, I don't like people saying I should give them my opinion. Right. My opinion doesn't matter. Right, when it comes to the truth. Uh, 
I don't know if people understand what I'm trying to say here. Uh, I give you an example. Quran chapter 10, verse 36. This is what God says. Let me let me let me put this verse on the screen. Quran chapter 10, verse 36. And most of them follow only assumption. Indeed, assumption does not avail against the truth at all. Indeed, God is aware of what they do. So, when it comes to opinion, opinion is all about assumption. That is what opinion is about. Then, like, I'm, I'm wearing a shirt. Then I'll ask you, what do you think? You think this shirt looks good on me? <sighs> someone will say yes. Someone will say no. You understand? It's not supposed to be based on, fa like, the truth. No. It's just opinion, assumption. People will assume things. So God says, and most of them only follow assumption. Indeed, assumption does not avail against the truth. So let the truth be your priority. Stop asking for people's opinion, right? So what Ababa Shraib is going to do to, to, uh, right now is to lead you to the Quran and show you the truth. Because the Quran is the hack. The opinion Baba Shraib has doesn't matter. If the final say comes from the Quran, that is your forkan. That is sufficient. My opinion doesn't matter, right? So first of all, he said we should read chapter 56, verse 39. In chapter 56, verse 39, usually when you are reading things, I will recommend you read the context to get the clear uh, point from the verse, right? It's, it makes things clearer. So when you read from the context, it is talking about on the day of judgment, those who enter paradise, right? So then God is talking about Lil as as Habil Yamin, those on the right who are going to paradise. Then he says, for the companions of the right side. Then he says, uh, uh, Thullatun. This Thullatun, the person was asking me a question, and he said, Many. If it is many, God will have sent uh, uh, Kathiran. Uh, he will have used Kathira, uh, like many. Or majority but this thulatu is a group it can be group of people or group of you know entities but group so a group from the predecessors and another group from the later generations right one but when the person was asking me the question he put into bracket and he says many from the earlier generations and many from the later generations right uh -huh. But when you check the word, it's uh, the thulatun. It's not about many. It's about a group, but there is no specific amount saying that many. No. So a group from the predecessors and another group from the later generations. This is what God says in Quran chapter fifty-six, verse thirty-nine to verse forty. Right. Then now it continues when we go up to verse thirteen. This is where the person was having another confusion. So what I want you to see is the same word thulatun. Yeah, the thulla. Is used. So this Sudlatun is a group from the predecessors. Then the second verse says, well, minal akhirin. So, and a few from the later generations. Now, this first group God is talking about is the one who will be near God. They will be next to God. That's why verse 11 says, Ula ikel a mukarrabun. So this Mukarrabun, they are the ones who will be near God. They are the first among the three groups. Because on the day of judgment, God is going to divide the groups into three. So then we have the elites. The elites are the ones, are the four first group, right? Then we have the right-hand-sided people. Then we have the one left-hand-sided people, right? So the ones who are going to be near God, they are the ones, Thullatum Minal, God will take, take a group from the predecessors, then now he will take few from the later generations. So which tells you that in the later generations, we are likely to have few pious people who are closer to God. Whilst in the previous generations, we are likely to have groups, large number of groups who are going to make it successfully in the first uh, elite group, right? So that is the point from the verse. So it tells you that people in the past are more superior to us in terms of faith. They are superior to us. Yes. 
Aha. Uh -huh. To have faith in the later generations is, is man, is difficult, right? You can see corruption all over around you. You can see a lot of messed up people all around you. You understand? For instance, I give an example. Uh, if you go, uh, uh, exactly, uh, Mishizi Sniper is saying, a lot of translations out there are misleading people, right? So this is why I would exhort people try to check up words and check up for for you know things you see that you don't understand ask uh you ask questions ask knowledgeable people learned people just like this guy did you understand uh -huh. he's asking because he knows how to break down and bring the truth out so that people will get to understand what is being said right yeah so that that was the question the brother was asking so this is he was asking for opinion but i'm giving him what the verses say i don't have an opinion to give you right i'm just telling you how god says it and that is what i'm telling you does it so now the next question i was asked is somebody says my question is about indoctrination uh you know i i did a program on this about indoctrination now indoctrination as you know the person says sir the issue started from home. Yes, I agree, because indoctrination always starts from home. This is how people are indoctrinated. Then, I mean, parents usually indoctrinated their children with their own beliefs. Yes, many a times that's what parents do. They pass on their own, uh, you know, belief systems to the kids. Uh, then, and still, those headsmen... Fulani, they don't even care with teaching their, their children good way in din. Majority of them, they in fact don't know what they are doing. Yes, it's true. Majority of our parents don't know what they are doing in their faith. Uh, I remember ha having... Um, uh, I remember having a friend whose parents were Christians. And... Um, I happen to show this person verses in the Bible which talks about pork meat being forbidden, not, not good for consumption. And this person showed it to their parents. And you know what the parents said? The parents said, <laughs> we're already eating it anyway. It's, it's, it's sweet. We like it. I'm serious. They didn't reject what the person said. They didn't say anything bad. But this is what they said. They started laughing at the, the, the person. And then they said, we're already enjoying the meat. It's good. That's all he said. Do you understand? <laughs> so, <laughs> so m many a times parents do things in their religion. It's not because they know it. No, they just do it for fun. And they do it because other people are doing it. Right? Uh -huh. This is why um, many a times our parents back in Africa, they incite us to go to the madrasa not because you, you should go and find knowledge. They just let you go because they don't want you to be, stay at home doing nothing. So they just say, go, follow your friends, go to the uh, madrasa. <laughs> you understand? And back in Africa, especially the so-called Muslim communities, they will tell the kids that if you don't go and pray, you are not going to get your food, the, the, lunch, the money for lunch or your breakfast. So you have to go and pray. Go, go to the masjid, go and do ablution and go and pray. So they are not teaching you the values of praying because you know, want to go closer to God. They are only telling you go and pray because if you don't pray, no, no money for you. Right? Uh -huh. So these are the values they teach the kids with indoctrination. So they don't actually teach kids knowledge, right? Uh, many, a, many a times, my, my daughter and my son, I when I practice Islam at home, when they see me, they ask me questions. I don't tell them, come and join me. No. They get out of curiosity. They come. My daughter sometimes out of curiosity can just go to the washroom and start washing herself and then go and take the prayer mat and then she's praying. And I ask her, what are you doing? She said, I'm praying to God. Because she asked me questions. Yeah, she asked me questions. You ask me, why do you do this? Because back in the days when I'm praying, when I put down my mat and I'm praying, my daughter doesn't know that if I'm praying, she doesn't need to interrupt. So I, I can be praying. She'll be calling me, Baba, Baba, I'm calling you. You are not responding. So I'll just give her the hand signal. So when I'm done and I'm telling her that um, when your mother is talking to me, what, what, what did she tell you or what did I tell you? She said, yeah, you said I should interrupt. 
Yes. So I'm talking to somebody who is superior to you. So that person, you being inferior, you don't need to interrupt. So let me finish. So I told her, now God that I'm talking to is superior to you and I, your mom, everyone. So I'm talking to God, allow me to finish. Then she will be like, sorry, you understand? So I, I'm explaining myself. But in Africa, they will threaten the kid. Hey, or even slap the kid or knock the kid's head. I'm serious. In Africa, this is what happens. I'm not saying all African countries, but this is how people are being trained in Africa, which is sad. So a lot of people, when it comes to seeking knowledge, they are behind. So when they see somebody has, is woke and is teaching them wisdom and knowledge, they find this person as a threat. You understand? Because to their ignorance is bliss. They want to stay in the bliss of ignorance. Uh, there are certain questions you don't dare get up in Africa and ask a, a, a scholar or an imam or a pastor. You don't dare do that. <laughs> Everybody will cast you out. You become an enemy of the state. <laughs> in Africa, you need to, uh, sorry, in America, you need to do the bigger, you know, uh, uh, crimes to become enemy of the state. But in Africa, you just need to say a word to a scholar and you become the enemy of the state. You understand? So indoctrination is real, especially in Africa and in third world countries. Now, they don't even care with teaching their children good. They don't care about teaching values or the right things to the kids. Now, the person says the parents are the ones that misguide them to the wrong way, right? Uh, yeah, during, during when a kid, a child is a child, the parents are the ones indoctrinating them. At that time, we don't, we don't blame the child yet. We start to blame the child when they attain maturity, when they can think for themselves, when they can reason for themselves. That is belaga to ashudda, to reach the age of consent or maturity. That is wh why a lot of kids in Europe, in the Western world, are becoming atheists. They are becoming atheists because the parents don't have the right answers to give them. The kids are asking tangible, reasonable questions, but people cannot answer it. So that is why I'm taking it up to myself to teach my daughter things, right? My, my daughter was watching a video from the tablet and she's asking me, why is, why is it that people are saying in the name of Jesus? And I said, because they are Christians. I asked her, are you a Christian? She said, no. She said, what is a Christian? And I said, people who worship Jesus, they are called Christians. And she asked me, is Jesus a Christian? I said, no, he's not. <laughs> <laughs> then she said, then why are people saying they are worshipping him? So this is critical thinking. The kids have that privilege in the Western world to ask these questions. You understand? And you, the parents, if you know, answer. If you don't know, tell them you don't know. So that when growing up, they will investigate things for themselves and then decide to choose where they want to go. Look, you cannot guide the ones you love. You can't guide the ones you like, you love. You can't. Uh, Quran chapter 28 verse 56. You can't. You can never guide the ones you love. Yes, you can't. If that is the case, uh, Abraham will have guided his father. Noah will have guided his son. Uh, Lot will have guided his wife. Uh, Noah will have guided his wife. And so on and so forth. You can't guide the ones you love. It, guidance is in the hands of God. But God will only guide people who are willing to be guided. So that's why it says, Quran chapter 16, verse 104. If you do not believe in the verses of God, he will not guide you. Do you get my point? Uh -huh. When sometimes my son is going to sleep and I tell him to say Bismillah, he refuses. He tells him, no, I'm not going to say it. I don't force him because he's still a kid. At that age, why will you force him to do things he doesn't understand? My daughter, when I say, say, she says it. But sometimes she will ask me, what if I don't say it, she says. And I said, there's nothing wrong, but it's always good to say. Then she will say it. You understand? I'm not forcing it on her. You understand? Because while she's growing up, the answers I give her, if they are tangible, it sticks to the head. And that is why we, we still have some memories we were taught since we were kids. We still have those memories in our heads. The values, the respect, the ethics, we still have it here because we found out they are good. That's why we kept it with us. If they are lies, you put it aside. And some of the traumas, child traumas you faced, you, is, is, you can never forget them. They are with you. So it makes you trust people less. Do you get the point? So 
This is why we have to teach people or our kids the right values and we give them evidences to the things we say. We don't just say it because we think we are superior to them. No, you teach them the reasons why. Okay. So now the question is that in Quran chapter 35 verse 18 and Quran chapter 17 verse 15, God say God said no soul will bear the burden of another, another soul, even if it is a close relative. The, the, the person says, what about those that got blind, indoctrinated from their parents for not showing them the right path? You know, sir, child brain has a remarkable perspective. So how can God judge this according to Quran? So then he says, and in 10, chapter 10, verse 44, God says he never wronged the people, but people wronged themselves. Yeah, that is true. God does not wrong the people. It is the people who are wronging themselves. But however, when we are talking about kids, when you read Quran chapter 16, verse 78, God is the one who brought us out of the bellies of our mothers, knowing nothing. We didn't know anything when we, gave, the, we were given birth. According to God, we don't know anything. Yes, that means in the world we came in. I'm giving an example. Let's say you go to a workplace and you are a new worker. You are a fresh worker. You are a new worker. Tell me, what do you know? You, you've, been, you've gone to a workplace that you have no idea what the work is about. Yes, salam, Bilal Jibri. Huh? If you have no idea what the work is about and you are a new worker, I'm serious. You are, you are lost. You don't know what is going on. If somebody pulls something like a machine, you have no idea. It is now that you are going to start asking questions. Oh, why did he pull that? Oh, he pulled that so that this machine can move. Then you are like, uh-huh. So you are keeping that in the memory. Okay, you go to the next one. Then you see somebody just standing. Then you are asking, why is this person standing? Uh, he's checking the monitor in case there's a red light that he will give a signal. Ah, uh, okay. Now, you, then you remember that one. So you go to the next one. You just see somebody making this, and they say, why is he doing that? Uh -huh. He has, he's the one pulling the thing so that the move, things will move from the building. Uh -huh. Now, put the same analogy I'm giving you. Put it back to your kids and see the picture. Don't you see the similarity? The same thing. Put it back to the kids. Now, see the analogy here. Do you see? The kids are getting the picture. You are explaining. You are picking it up, putting it, but be truthful. If it is a lie, they will grow up and check it. They will find out you are lying. Eventually. Just like God woke up correctional officer and I'm exposing your dirty lies to the people. I'm serious. <laughs> he will, Look, he or she will eventually find out if you are a bad parent or you are. <laughs> I'm serious. Look, when I promise my kids I'll buy them something and I fail the promise, I have to apologize. I'm apologizing as if I'm dying tomorrow. You think it's a joke? Don't ever, don't dare lose that trust between you and your kids. <laughs> I'm serious. So when you see Baba Shraib going all out against the scholars, you think I'm just here just to tarnish their image or their personality? You don't know the damage they've caused. So you want me to romance their egos and come respectfully. Uh, <laughs> Zakir Naik, uh, you know here, you made a mistake, so it's not like that. Um, seriously. Do you want me to show you the dirty videos of these scholars tagging us, kafirs, telling people, fight those people, they are kafirs, they are going to hell because they are following the Quran alone? When God is giving me that audacity and the power and platform to speak against this, this miscreants. And you think I'm just here because I'm interested in their personality? Seriously? <laughs> it's the same way when a kid wakes up, finally, they grow up, they become mature, and they find out their parents have been lying to them all this while. I'm serious. They will never smile at you again. I'm serious. No matter how lovely you were as a parent, you let your kids grow up and find out that you've been lying to them. <laughs> you are screwed. I've seen somebody who sent his parents to jail because they squandered the money he sent to them to build a house for him. They were lying to him. They never built a house. They sent them money to build a house for him and they squandered all the money. He sent them to jail 
Yes, jail, jail. You know jail behind the metal. <laughs> he said, <laughs> "They were dishonest." You understand? Righteousness is what makes you a family. If you have a family member is not righteous to you, cast him out. I'm serious. He will kill you for free. Especially people from Africa. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> Forget about you having a brother, mother's father, sister. They will kill you. I'm serious. So far as there's no righteousness in the family. That's why the father of Abraham tried to kill Abraham. You understand? When there's no righteousness, people will go to the extreme to tarnish you, to destroy you, regardless if you are their son, your daughter, you are their, their, their daughter, you are the father, you are... Look. So don't joke with such things. You understand? God does not wrong the people. You right? understand? So when our kids, we are lying to them, eventually God will let them reach the age of maturity and then they will get to know the truth that you've been lying to them. So that is why even when it comes to the property of an orphan, God says don't give it to the foolish. You have to test the, 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 the child and see if they have reached the age of maturity. Then you hand over their property to them. Quran chapter 4 verse 6. And do we have until they attain marriage. Because attaining the age of marriage is the age of maturity. Right? Uh -huh. So based on the question the brother is asking, our kids don't have the blame. They don't have the fault. No, they don't have the blame. They don't have the fault. But however, when they start realizing, becoming matured, it rests on them to make decisions, to actually know the difference between wrong and right. Because remember, Quran chapter 91, verse 7 to verse 10, God says, wa ma falhamaha fujuraha wa taquwaha, kad aflaha man zakkaha wa kad khaba man dasaha. So according to God, Every nafs, he has given you the ilham. Ilham is, an, is a different version of inspiration. God has already given to every soul. So this ilham is to show you that fujuraha wa taquwaha is to show you the piousness and then the immorality. So every soul knows this, even our kids. And that is why our kids, when they are hiding alone, a boy and a girl, they are hiding together in a room. When they try to do any immorality, and you, the parents, step in. They feel embarrassed, right? They feel embarrassed. They're like, now, so you, the parent, will be imagine. Where did they learn this? How did they know this? It is God who has already embedded this into us. Quran chapter ninety-one, verse seven to verse ten. Write it down, right? So you come in now. These are inspirations. It's a different version of wahi. We call it ilham that God has embedded into us, so you can be having it. You can be having it. You can sense it. And that's why when our kids, our kids do evil, they go and hide. How do they know it's evil? How? Now, who told them it's evil? Huh? Do you understand? Uh-huh. So, that is the point. Somebody says, you work hard, but boss takes money and pay people. Yeah, well, that's part of life. Uh huh. That's part of life. Uh huh. So somebody says programmed by the creator. Yes, just like when you give back to your kids, right? To the baby. I'm going to show you one analogy that people don't pay attention to. Do you see the baby? Tell me who taught the baby how to suckle from the mother's breast. Who? Tell me. Is it? Is it you? No. Or does a does the baby has to go to a teacher <laughs> to for the teacher to teach him? And say, hey, look, look at the drawing board. Look, you see, this is the breast. This is the nipple. Uh, are you watch? Watch. This is the nipple. So when you are suckling, let the, your tongue go here, and then you suckle from the up so that the milk can come out. Uh, do you understand? The baby doesn't need any teacher. God has already embedded this into him or her. The baby doesn't need the parent to teach them how to crawl. You never taught them. You. Who? You? Tell me, the baby, when they came out, did they see you crawling? You weren't crawling. You were walking. So the baby, God has already embedded this into us. Come in. So it gets to a point when they're the same way, when they reach maturity, there are things your kids will be doing you never taught them. So they have the right to decipher between wrong and right. And that is why advices don't change people. But however, 
people would live to regret it after they realize the advice is the truth. So that is why God gave us the Quran as a book of guidance. The book has to be there consistently with us. We have to read to get the remembrance from it so that it can consi consistently remind us that don't step into this trap. Don't follow the, dev the devil's trap. Don't go here. We need that reminder. So Quran chapter 20 verse 2 to verse 4. Ma so the Quran is to serve as a rem reminder. Is to serve as a reminder for those who fear. You understand? So the Quran will be giving you the reminder. It says, be careful. Don't go here. Hey, be careful. Don't fall into this trap. Be careful. Don't go here. So similarly, we as parents, we do the same to our kids. You understand? We do the same to our kids. Sometimes I will tell my son, no, don't do this. He's telling me, no, I want to do it. I said, okay, do it. When he does it, he gets stuck. He calls mama my help. He says, Baba, now imagine us doing the same to God. So human being, you're bound to err. You fall in traps. You fall in error. You fall in temptations. You fall in, you mention it. We will all face it. You understand? But you need something to give you the guidance. That is the book of God. So it is helping us along the way as a reminder going forward. Yes. Thank you very much. Hey, Faris, I see you. Salam, bro. Uh -huh. So uh, Chris quoted chapter 8, verse 73. Yes. It's telling you that the disbelievers are allies of each other. So you, the believers, has to do the same. In meaning you have to also be allies of each other. Believers, not believers with disbelievers there will be chaos and corruption on earth if you actually mingle with disbelievers everything will be corrupt you get the point uh -huh. so that is why in quran chapter 71 prophet noah was praying against the disbelievers that god should destroy them because they are all we call it causing corruption and chaos so if eventually we are living next to people who are corrupt and chaotic what we have to call on god for is to wipe them out because nobody wants corruption in their country. Do you, do you get my point? And that is why I appreciate how Europe is dealing with corruption. When they find somebody who is corrupt, they have to deal with you. And also in the Middle East, uh, Asia, when you are found being corrupt, countries like China, Singapore, they will deal with you heavily. Uh, I like that. Uh, let's move on. So the third question, somebody says, whether the word Muhammad comes in the Quran as a proper noun or adjective, right? Somebody's asking whether the name Muhammad, the Prophet Muhammad's name, comes in the Quran as a proper noun or an adjective. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what you people need to know is before I answer this question, somebody says, according to them, Muhammadun, that is the name of Muhammad, sometimes it has the tanwin. When we say tanwin, those double lines or double dumma you see on top of a letter. Right at the end, when you see that people are classifying it as an adjective or a proper, uh, like not being a proper noun, right? So they say, uh, Muhammadun, Muhammadin, Muhammadan. So when that appears, they think it is not a name of a person. Now, the problem that people have is let me show you this, let me help you to understand this. There's a different look, we have something we call classical Arabic, and there's the classic Arabic, and then there is modern standard Arabic. The Quranic Arabic is way different from all the Arabic languages, the dialects and uh, the, you know, the versions they have. Now, when I say versions, some people might not understand. There are different versions of Arabic language, just like there are different versions of English language. There's American English, there's Australian English, there's British English. They are English, but they are all versions. I'm serious. And then there's uh, Nigerian English, and there's Ghana English, there's South African English, there's Irish English. <laughs> so when you go to Arabic language, they also have different versions of Arabic language. I'm serious. So to make it, to simplify the version issue, then we have what we call the classic, the classical version, and then the modern standard version. Now let's take the example of English language. There is a book called Romeo and Juliet. I know most of you based in the UK and the Western world, you know about this book, Romeo and Juliet, uh, which was written by William Shakespeare, right? 
Now, what I want you to understand is before I give the answer concerning the, the name of Muhammad, some people thinking Muhammad is not a prophet, a human being, like it is something. God is describing someone else or something else. It's a name, by the way. So I'm going to help you to understand that. So William Shakespeare writing the book Romeo and Juliet. Right now, a lot of you speak English language, right? There's, there's a Ghana man sitting here. There's a lot of you speaking English language. But when you are given that book, do you know why you struggle? Do you know why is it that when you are reading, you don't make sense of it? Of it? You'll be struggling. Do you know why? Because it is not written in the version of your English. Do you get my point? The version of your English, that is not what it is written in. So that book follows a different rule of English. It's not following the rules you are reading from. Aha. Uh -huh. You're getting my point, huh? So that's a, class, a, a, a classical version of English. So that is a different version of English. So when you use the modern version standard, English, the rules governing the modern standard to actually implement it on the old version, that is kaput. You'll be confused. You'll be in limbo. It doesn't match. You can't take the, 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 the modern version, the, the rules and regulations of the modern version, you cannot implement it on the old version. It doesn't work. You still read it and it doesn't make sense. Because you see the word structure, this is here, this is there, this is saying this and it means this, and you'll be like, oh, Saya, uh, my lad, uh, you know, for those who have watched this, uh, it says the series called Outlander or so. But I'm just giving an example, right? So don't use, don't think you take the modern version Arabic rules and structure to understand certain things in the Quran and say, oh, it doesn't make sense. I will help you out. So now when we say, the person is asking that according to them, Muhammadun, Muhammadin are adjectives because they carry the tanwin at the end, that, those double uh, signs you see at the, at the end. Uh-huh. Uh Yeah, thank you, Kaba. Uh -huh. Those signs at the end, yes, okay, Sister Hannah, I'll be coming to your question, right? So uh, I mark it down. I'll come to your question, right? Because I still have time. I can answer your question. I'll come it to you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so then the person says, because they carry Tanwin at the end of it, other prophets' names don't have the Tanwin, and so they are proper nouns. Please cl clarify, bro. So I'm going to help you to, to understand that when you see Muhammadun, Muhammadin, Muhammadan, it doesn't change that it's a name of a person. It's a name. But you thinking because of the Tanwin at the end, it shows that it is not a name of a person. It's not a proper noun. Because you are using the modern version, modern standards to actually implement those rules on the old version. The Quranic Arabic, the Quranic Arabic comes from God. You don't expect it to be moving along the lines of what you have written for yourself. There's a difference. Do you understand me? There is a difference. Just like I gave you the example of the William Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet. If you bring that book into the modern standard English, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> because if you are going to use the rules of the grammar of the modern standard to implement it on the William Shakespeare book, it will not make sense. So what do you have to do? You have to understand in the timeline in which the William Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet book it was written and how the rules concerning that book were implemented so that it can be understood. Okay, so now let's go back to the Quran. I take you to Quran chapter 3, verse 144. Verse 144. In Quran chapter 3, verse 144, so let me put it on the screen, right? So when you check on the screen, God says, Wama Muhammadun. It says, Wama Muhammadun. Illa Rasulun. Now, because of this, some people are thinking, since it says Muhammadun, it cannot be the name of a person. It's not a proper noun, meaning it's a title. 
and it's not a fixed name, right? Some people are saying because of this, it's a title and it is not a fixed name. A title, even your name is a title. A name is a title also, right? Uh -huh. So now, because of the Muhammadun, people think it's not a proper noun. And uh, another example, that is, this is Quran chapter 3, verse 144. So let's go to the other example. That is in Quran chapter 33, verse 40. In 33, verse 40, God says, Ma kana aba ahadin mir rijalikum so you can see again Muhammadun, it has the tanween at the end, that is Dummatain. Then again, we go to the next one. In Quran chapter 48, verse 29, it says, Muhammadun Rasulullah. Wallazina ma'u ashiddahu ala al-kuffar ruhamahu baynahum. So you can see Muhammadun again. So people are thinking since it has the Tanween, it is not a proper noun. Okay, let's go to the last one. The last one is in Quran chapter 47, verse 2. In Quran chapter 47, verse 2, it says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَآمَنُوا بِمَا نُزِّلَ عَلَى مُحَمَّدٍ You see here, it doesn't say Muhammadun. It says Muhammadin. وَهُوَ الْحَقْ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ كَفَّرَ عَنْهُمْ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ وَأَصْلَى بَالَهُمْ So because of the Muhammadin, Muhammadun, people are saying, no, that's not a proper noun. Because they are using the Moody standard rules to implement on the Quran and they think they are making sense. And I'm going to help you. So if that is the case, if you said that means, that means the Muhammad is not a name, it's a title, and it's not a name of a person, I'm going to help you. We are going to check other prophets to see if it is consistent so that you get that how confused you people are when you say that Muhammad is not a name. Okay. So let's use some prophets, for example. So I'm going to take uh, Lut. When we take Prophet Lut, let's go to chapter 15, verse 59. In Quran chapter 15, verse 59, it says, Illa ala lutin, lutin, inna la munajuhum ajma'in. So God says, except the family of Lut, ala, ala, that is, this is just like uh, chapter 3, al al imran, uh, al is family, your family, yeah? so ala lutin. So the name of Lut has a tanween, kasratain. You see the kasratain, that is a tanween, the double instance of the, the tashkil. So this tanween, are you also saying since it is it has the tanween, so it is not Lut, it's just a title and it's not his name? Is that the case? Okay, let's see another example. So here it says Lutin, that is kasratain. The next one is another Lut again, 21 71. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Uh, 2171. In 2171, he says, So you see, Lu Tan. So, and we rescued him and Lot to the land. Ah. Uh, Art. So now you see the Luton. It was it's still loot because Bilarakat, you, you you see loot when you go to the root word of the name. You have the lamb, we have the wow, you have the ta. It's there, the root is there. But now it says Luton. Previously it says Lutin. Muhammadun. Muhammadin. The structure of the name is still there. It is there, the ending. And you are using the modern day version of Arabic to actually access, use the grammatical rules to access the Quran. It doesn't work that way. You'll be fooling yourself when you do that. I'm not done with the examples. Let's go again. Quran chapter 29, verse 26. In 29, verse 26, it says, فَآمَنَ لَهُ 
Lutun. You see? Lutun. It has dummatain. This dummatain on top of the ta. Lutun. Do you see? So here, and Lut believed him and said, I will emigrate. So are you saying just because the name of Lut has the tun, tan, tin, so that means it's not a name. It's not it's not a proper noun, right? That that's your understanding. However, this question has been asked by different people, right? Uh -huh. So the way I'm answering, I'm answering not against the person, I'm answering based on the people who have that uh, notion to confuse the people who actually believe that Muhammad is an entity who existed, Lut was an entity who existed, but people, because they don't understand the structure of the Quran, they think they can use the modern standard version grammatical rules to access to the Quran. It doesn't work that way. Anyways, that is Prophet Lut. We are done with that. Now let's go to Prophet Shu'aib. Prophet Shu'aib, we go to Quran chapter 7, verse 92. <laughs> <clears throat> With Prophet Shu'aib, we see God says, Allazina kazzabu Shu'aiban. Allazina kazzabu Shu'aiban. So this Shu'aib, that is the, the, the name itself, Shu'aib. But then the ban added, because of this Tanwin, people are thinking, no, it cannot be a proper noun. It's a name, it's a name. But because you are using the the grammatical rules of the modern version to assess the classic version you're confused so those who denied shu'aib were as if they had not prospered therein right so understand this and muhammad is not the only one who has his name written in that way with the tanwin so the next example is prophet no with prophet no's name we go to 26 verse 105 Prophet Nu, he says, Kazabat Kaumu Nuhin. So you can see the Noah's name has Nu. You can see the initial, the three initials are there. The three le le letters, trilateral, uh, trilateral root word is there. But then the Hell has the Tanwin, Kasratain. So Nuhin. So does that mean that is not a proper noun also? That's not a point. It's still a name. You just need to understand the structure of the of the version of the Arabic you are dealing with. Another example, the same chapter you go to 106, chapter 26, verse 106. I'm going to show you. You see up here, it is used Nuhin. Now look down here. Is kala lahum ahuhum Nuhun. Up here, it says Nuhin. Down here, it says Nuhun. Dummatain kesratain. When their brother Noah, you see, and up here, the people of Noah denied. It's still the same name. It's a proper noun. But if you are following the ending, thinking you are going to use the modern standard grammatical rules to assess the Quran, you'll be fooling yourself, like I said, with the book of William Shakespeare, Romeo and Juliet. If you are also going to use the modern standard English, the grammatical rules we have today to assess the Romeo and Juliet book, you will be confused. And again, the next one is Quran chapter 21, verse 76. Quran chapter 21, verse 76. God says, Wanuhan is nada min kablu. So also Noah, when he called Elia. So you see here he says, Nuhan. Previously, Nuhin. Nuhun. Right? The tenwin at the end doesn't signify some, just an adjective. You have to understand the rules, how God actually utilized things in the Quran. The Quran is the one you have supposed to use to access all the Arabic languages. Don't use the rules from the, the man-made man versions of Arabic language to, to analyze the Quran. You'll be confused. Uh, then the next one is Swali. That is Prophet Shilla. So, Swali, we go to 26, verse 142. 26, verse 142. God says, Is kala lahum ahuhum swalihun. So, swalihun, it has the dummatain. Swalihun. You see? Swalihun. Then the next one for the name of Swali, we go to chapter 11, verse 89. 
chapter 11 verse 89 then he says uh yes here au au kauma swalihin au kauma swalihin so you see the swalihin swali has a kasratain the tanwin is kasratain but previously we see it is different from here so that's how it goes swalihin swalihun swalihan you understand but it doesn't mean it's not a proper noun okay so the next one is in quran chapter 7 verse 75 in quran chapter 7 verse 75 you see here anna swalihan you see atalamuna anna swalihan so you see swalihan it is a proper noun it's a name still you see aha uh -huh. so then we have swalihan swalihun and swalihin by still a name so don't just look at the end and use the modern version of arabic and think and same goes with the name hud if you go to hud chapter 11 verse 89 in that same uh, chapter chapter 11 verse 89 you find hudun hudan hudin that is chapter 26 uh verse 124 chapter 7 verse 65 chapter 11 verse 89 you see the name of hud also has the same structure also so same goes then with muhammad muhammadun muhammadin so if he says muhammadan there's nothing wrong it's still a name You need to understand the structure of the Quran. Don't actually try to use it to uh, the, the modern version rules to implement it on the Quran. You will be confused, right? Okay, so this answers the question of the brother asking if Muhammad's name is a proper noun or an adjective. You understand? If you go in the to the classic version of the Quran itself, it is a proper noun, right? You have to check the the theme of the Quran itself. It gives you the answers. Okay, so now let me come back to the mainstream people uh, who are watching me right now and uh, asking the question. So, um, first of all, Tadzi is asking a question. He says, "Drink." He says, "Beer is beer haram." That's the question he asks. God mentions in Quran chapter two, verse two hundred and nineteen. Quran chapter 2 verse 219 let's let's put it here So God says Yes alunaka an al khamr wal maisir when they ask you they ask you about wine and gambling right then God says kul fihi ma ithmun kabir wa manafi'u lin nas So God says there is great sin in them both as well as benefits for mankind Then he says uh wa is wa ithmuhuma akbaru min naf'ihima so then he says but their sin is greater than their benefits so they ask you about wine and gambling you know many of the casinos in the world many of the casinos or many of the the betting firms or the gambling uh, firms this they have gambling and they have alcohol <laughs> they go hand in hand <laughs> Have you noticed that many of the casinos the gambling spots they have the gambling and then they have wine because both both are the acts of you know, when, it, when it's a combination of what God is talking about in this verse in this verse he didn't say when they ask you about wine no it's a combination So they will ask you about it's just like when they ask you about bread and butter. So they ask you about bread and butter. See bread and butter is this or that. But now it's not asking you about bread alone. It says they ask you about bread and butter. Here it is they ask you about wine and gambling together. So then a combination of the answer came in, right? there is great sin in them both as well as benefits for mankind but their sin is greater than their benefits so now the question is are you looking for the sin 
or are you looking for the benefits? I'm going to give an example. You take a knife, a knife. So let's assume this is a knife. Let's assume this is my knife, right? Now, when you go to the market to buy a knife, that same knife, you can use it for good and you can use it for bad. That same knife you use to cut tomatoes. That same knife you use to cut onions till you start crying. That same knife you use to cut meat. You can use the same knife to kill somebody or commit suicide. That same knife. So that same knife can be used for evil and can be used for good. Put that in mind. Now, so somebody might not understand the point I'm heading at. I'm heading at there are things that God specifically doesn't say haram directly, but to avoid it is better. So when God says, Fajitanibuhu, avoid such, because avoidance of it is better. I give an example, just like candy, candies. They are not forbidden. They are not haram. Candies. But sometimes I forbid my kids. Uh, I, I tell my kids to avoid it. Sorry. I don't forbid because when I forbid, they don't have to take it at all. Sometimes I tell my kids to avoid it. So, fajitanibuhu, to avoid it is different from saying it is haram. So, the question is, is, is wine haram? God never says it's haram. No. Let me tell you the things that you put in your mouth directly, which are which are directly stated as haram. I'm going to show you the verse, right? Which, when something goes indirect, it is haram. I'm going to show you a verse. So, based on this verse, when people quote this verse to show you that, look, since God says there is a sin in them, look, God never said both of them are sins. He said there is sin in them. <laughs> you see the difference? Just like the knife I told you about, the knife. Knife is not haram. But you can use knife to kill somebody. At that time, knife becomes haram. When you kill that knife you are using, it becomes, they will take it away. The police will seize it from you because you are using it for evil. But knife on its own entirely is not haram. No. Do you get my point? Aha. Uh -huh. You need to avoid using it for evil. So now, I take you to Quran chapter 5 verse 90. In Quran chapter 5 verse 19, God says, Ya you are lazina amanu, inna mal hamuru, wal maisur, wal asnab, wal aslam, rijisun min amali shaitan. Then he says, Fajitanibuhu, la allakum tuflihun, O you who have believed, wine, gambling, idols, and divination arrows are only filled from the the work of what the devil so avoid such so that you may succeed now if i tell you to avoid something it doesn't mean that thing is is haram no understand the difference look i keep telling you quran chapter 10 verse 82 god says wa yuhikku llahu alhaqqa bi kalimatihi wa la wukarha almujrimun god will enforce the truth with his words even if the criminals dislike it I'm serious. I will be giving you a particular log logic today. You'll be shocked about this subject. I've done, I think I've done it before, but you will be amazed with this subject. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So here, here, what you are going to see is God says, so avoid such. Then the reason why God is telling you to avoid, He's going to explain because God doesn't just tell you to avoid something without explaining. Just like you, the people, when you have kids, don't tell your kids to stop doing something or do something without giving them the reasons. Give them the reasons. That is what will strengthen their understanding or their faith or their loyalty to whatever you want them to do. So give them the reasons. So God is going to give us the reason why he said avoid it. Because he gave you the classifications of the group of these things. The wine, the gambling, the idols, and then the divination arrows. It's a group. Then he told you, they are only filled. And when something is filthy, you need to clean it. So they are filled from the work of the devil. But did he say they are haram? 
Still, he never said they are haram. He only said avoid it. But who is he talking to? He's talking to the believers. But mankind, mankind in general will never avoid it. That is why Quran chapter 2 verse 219, he says, when they ask you about the wine and the gambling, say in them both, there is a great sin and benefits for the people. Because people will always go for the benefits inside. But now the verse, now God is talking here, he's talking to believers out of the mankind. God is talking to believers. So if you are a believer, whose advice will you take? You take the advice of God. So now God says, oh, you who believe, wine, gambling, idols, divination arrows are only filled from the work of the devil. So avoid such. So if I am you as a believer, what do I need to do? I need to avoid it. Do you get the point? Okay. So that you may succeed. You want to succeed? Now listen to God. So now the reason is, verse 91. an yukia. Yuki abayna kumul adawata wal bagdaa fil fil hamri wal maisir wa yasud wa yasuddakum an zikrullah wa anis salat fa hal antum muntahun so now this is the question the god says the devil only intends to inflict antagonism and hatred between you through wine and gambling and to repel you from the remembrance of God and from the what? Salat. So now God is asking the question. So will you refrain? He's still not saying the wine and gambling are haram. He never said that. But he's telling you the believer. This command here is going to believe us only. So you the believer, will you refrain? Will you try to refrain? It's better, right? So it's better to refrain from it. That is, if you want to succeed, if you want to be here and there, that's up to you. <laughs> Do you get my point? So you want to succeed because if you if you, the devil is setting a trap and you keep getting inside, obviously one day you are going to die from it. So it's better to stay away from it. But verse 93, and uh, sorry, verse 93, after this verse, verse 93 is going to tell you something. Verse 93 says, Laisa ala lazina amanu wa amilu salihat. Huh? Then he says, Junahun fima toimu toimu iza ma takau wa amanu wa amilu salihat thumma takau. Then he says, wa amanu thumma takau. He says, wa ahsanu. Wallahu yuhibbul muhsinin. So God says, there is no blame on those who believe and do good deeds concerning what they what have tasted. Huh? Then he says, so, so long as they reference believe and do good deeds, then become pious and believe, then become pious. Then he says, and do well. Then he says, and God loves those who are benevolent. Do you get the, the point? Uh -huh. So when you check up to verse 93, the verse is talking to believers. But then he's telling you in verse 93 that there is no blame on those who believe and do righteous deeds concerning what they have what tasted. The reason is because God never said, Hamr is haram. He never said it. I dare anybody watching. If you can show me a verse where God says Hamr is haram, I'm waiting. But don't misconstrue the things I'm saying. As a believer, God is advising you to avoid it. But he never said it's haram. So let me tell you the things that God, when God wants to say haram, he says it specifically. Let me tell you. Quran chapter 6 verse 145. In Quran chapter 6, verse 145, this is what God asked the messenger to tell the people. Kul la ajidu fi ma uhiya ilayya muharraman ala ta'im yet amuhu illa an yakuna maitatan au daman masfuha. Then he says, au lahamul khinzir. 
fa innahu rijsun aw fiska then he says uhila li ghayri allahi bihi then he says famani adturra ghayra bagin wala adi fa inna rabbaka ghafuru rahim now god is saying say i do not find in what has been inspired to me any food outlawed upon ingesting it do you understand i do not find any food that god is saying it is haram upon ingesting it unless it be a dead animal number 1 number 2 or blood poured out like drinking of blood when we were kids the so called mushriks they will keep telling us when you see blood coming out from your hand they will say suck it when you are injured they say put your no it's haram god says don't drink blood because you can you can it's poisonous you can be uh you can have infection easily is dangerous so god says no that is haram to do so if you are the kind of people when you get injured you are drinking your blood stop that stupidity I'm serious you are trying to be a vampire are you a vampire <laughs> we have to check you very well if you if you get injured and you are you can drink your blood you are dangerous we have to be aware of you especially the mushriks they do that then all the meat of pig that is also haram you understand so here god is telling you directly and he told you the reason why they are haram listen to why he said they are haram then he says for indeed it is rijisun it is filthy that is why it is haram do you see the reason then he says or to be sinfully offered to other than god that makes it haram but whoever is compelled even upon it being haram listen carefully even though the dead meat is haram the 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 blood poured out is haram the the meat of pig is haram because they are filthy but still even upon this god says whoever is compelled without desiring not trespassing then indeed your lord is forgiving and merciful so meaning you can be in a situation where you have no choice so let's say you go to an island where there is no choice and it is only meat pig of uh, meat of pig you have to eat to survive god says you can survive with it because you are not doing it out of just wanting to sin do you get my point thank you so now Why is it that God directly didn't say wine is haram directly but he's telling you the believers avoid it. So as a believer what do you need to do is you avoid it. As a believer avoid it. But in general wine is not haram. People will benefit from it whether you like it or not. Look whether if you like let the whole world become Saudi Arabia they will still drink 2% 3% just like Asim Al Hakim told you. I'm going to play his video. He's a Sunni, so let me play his video so that the Sunnis can hear him. If I don't play the video, they will not be happy. Ah, huh? so let let me play two percent, three percent, ah, so that the Sunnis can hear, right? Mm-hmm. Because if it is me saying it, they will say, "Baba Shaib, you are lying against him." So two percent, three percent. I'm going to play it for you. Listen to Asim. Ah, huh? he says I drink beer and I'm proud of it. He said it. I'm not saying it to listen. I drink beer and I'm proud of that. But the beer I drink before you quote me for that is from Saudi Arabia and it has like 2% maybe 3% alcohol and it's legal and it's halal. One says, "Oh, it has alcohol." Akhi, if I drink half a pack, nothing happens. I drink beer and I'm proud of that. Did you hear <laughs> you get it <laughs> if you don't get it forget about it aha <laughs> 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 uh-huh. so if you are foolishly out there say haram 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 This is your shake. He says he drink beer, he's proud of it. I'm serious and it's not a joke. This guy is telling you the real truth. He drinks it. It's not like uh, he's joking. 
drink. He's a Saudi Arabia man. He says that the drink he drinks is from Saudi Arabia. 2%, 3%. He says he can drink six pack and nothing happens. <laughs> but when Baba Shrabi is sitting here talking, you will say, hey, he's a kafir. No, look this guy. He's telling people to drink beer. No, I didn't say I'm drinking beer. You, your shake is saying I drink beer. Look, your shake. I'm serious. Your shake, oh, not me. Your shake is saying I drink beer. And he didn't say only I drink beer. He says I'm proud of it. You didn't hear what he says. He says it's, it's halal and it's from Saudi, 2%, 3%. And you are here fully yourself. Baba Shrabi just give you honest, honest lecture from the Quran. You think I'm just inciting people to do evil. Huh? Huh? So let me play the video again. I drink beer. This is what he said. So that you don't put it on me. I drink beer. And I'm proud of that. But the beer I drink, before you quote me for that, is from Saudi Arabia. And it has like... 2%, maybe 3% alcohol, and it's legal, and it's halal. One says, oh, it has alcohol. Akhi, if I drink half a pack, nothing happens. I drink beer, and I'm proud of that. Oh, you what? Yoruba will say, oh, tita. Oh, tita. Okay, so he drinks beer, and he's proud of it. He says 2%, 3%, right? So I think when the she sheets the Shia people bash him very hard, he came out to 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 fix his statement, right? That 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 look. The matter of fact is there is no explicit verse in the Quran which directly tells you wine is haram. I'm serious, it's not there. But as a believer, there's a difference between a Muslim and a believer. A believer is a movement. As a believer, God says you should avoid it, and He told you the reason. Because the devil will incite you through antagonism and so on and so on. That is why he says you should avoid it. Do you understand? So avoiding something doesn't mean it is haram. No. There's a difference. I can tell my kids to avoid candies. But it doesn't mean one day they cannot go somewhere and take candy. So I'm going to show you from the Quran an example. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. <clears throat> So before I go to the example, let me show you how Asim Halakim, how he embarrassed himself again when he came back to, 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 to say something concerning what he did. Now listen to the second video. He's going to embarrass himself. And the, 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 the most embarrassing part is when he said he's not a scholar. However, this is not our question. Did you, Sheikh Asim, say 2% to 3% in a, a drink is permissible because it does not waste? Yes, I did. Do you still stand by this? No, I don't. What do you mean? Akhi, when I talk about Islamic issues, I don't talk from my own self. I, it, it, I'm not a scholar. I don't come up and say, hmm, yeah, I think this is halal, this is haram. They think they are sensible and they keep on making mistakes. So you heard what he says. He said it, and now they are asking him a question again. Do you still stand by it? He says, no, I don't. That's hypocrite, right? Mm -hmm. Then they ask him, he says, Ahi, because I'm not a scholar, I don't come out and say, hmm, 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 hmm. Is that not what he asked him? Is that not what he did? That's, this guy takes $100 for consultation for half an hour. You think I'm joking? Wallahi, he takes cons consultation, $100 for consultation, for half an hour. This guy, the mushriks classify him as a scholar, this guy. He said he's not a scholar, by his own words. And this same guy sit down and say, I drink beer, 2%, 3%, because he's from Saudi Arabia. So everything from Saudi Arabia only is halal, right? When it's coming from uh, Britain or Germany and so on, it is haram, right? Mm -hmm. No problem. When Baba Shaib is sitting here teaching you logic, you say, hey, he's a kafir. He wants us to go and bring... Look, even if I tell you beer or not, do you know how much the Islamic, so-called Islamic country, do you know how much they drink beer? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know, right? <laughs> the so-called Islamic countries, you don't know they drink beer, eh? They drink a lot of beer. You sit here and keep... We call it in Ghana, we call it Gogoro. I think Nigeria was Gogoro, they drink Gogoro a lot. <laughs> but as a believer you have to avoid it because it's coming from the handwork of the devil 
right? But there are benefits in there that you can use for other benefits. Meaning, in Ghana, we have something they call alumbo bites. We have whatever, whatever. If you want it for the benefit, that's up to you. Me, Baba Shraib, I'm good. I don't need that. But look, if God never said it is haram. If you are a believer, fine, avoid it. Hmm? Believer, listen, I say believer. Just like the salat is for believers. It's not for the mushriks. The ones wasting their time doing up and down, they say five times. It's not salat is not for them. Their salat is different. It's coming from Sahih Bukhari, not from God. Uh -huh. So let, let me uh, give the last verse. Then we move on uh, to the point, right? Okay, so I take this verse, Quran chapter 47, verse 15, right? I want to show you something. So this is the example of paradise. Quran chapter 47, verse 15. God is telling us concerning paradise. Huh? So it says, Mathalul jannati lati wi'idal muttaqoon the example of the garden which has been promised to the pious is therein are what rivers of uncontaminated water. Number one, the what the rivers we have on earth, a lot of our rivers have been contaminated. But God is telling you in the garden on the day of judgment, the garden He's going to give you, there are going to be rivers of uncontaminated water. Okay. Then it says, then it says rivers of milk. Whose taste does not change. So the rivers of milk, which the taste will not change. The rivers we have on earth of milk. If you have a milk from the lamb, from the sheep, from the goat, the taste of the milk will change. Whether you like it or not. But God is telling you the milk on the day of judgment in the garden, it will not, the taste will not change. The water also there is not contaminated. Then now it goes. Rivers of wine, the same word, hammer. The rivers of wine, delicious for the drinkers. The rivers of wine, delicious for the drinkers. And I tell you now, if in, in general, hammer is haram, how come this something which is haram, God is going to give you in paradise? Hello? If in general, hammer is haram, I'm asking you, the mushriks, how come God is going to give you hammer in paradise? If it is bad thing, why is God going to take it to paradise and give it to you? Now tell me. Okay, do we drink water or not? God will give you in paradise, right? Ah, uh, He will give you water. Do you drink milk or not? He will give you in paradise, right? Yes. What about wine? Oh, you don't drink wine? But you're going to drink wine in paradise? I, 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 that, is that not hypocrisy? Ah. Ah. Huh? Do you see the point? But the classifications here, God is telling you that there's a difference. Because the other one you are drinking from the earth is contaminated, coming from the handwork of the devil. So they, it, will, it will cause a lot of problems for you. Look, there are different versions of wine. We have a wine which doesn't actually get you intoxicated. Yes, there are different versions of wine. Let me show you. Let me show you one. Now you see this. This is wine. This is wine. But it is written there alcohol free. For people who can see it here. It says alcohol free. It means what they do is they extract, they filter the alcohol, the intoxicant out. So you still have the taste, but it is not alcoholic. So this is alcohol free, right? It's wine. Do you get my point? So when we say wine, some people will take the ones which actually intoxicate you. But then Asim Halakim, he confessed. He, he tells you he drinks the 2% to 3%. He even takes half a pack. And he tells you nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> and now Baba Shraib is just showing you alcohol, free wine. Somebody will be typing that this is a kafir. This is the jal. This is the devil. I told you he's Ibilis. <laughs> 
Why indoctrination in, in religion is too much? I'm serious. Uh -huh. So Quran chapter 47 verse 15, that is Surah to Muhammad, chapter of Muhammad. So God says he will give you wine and he says it's delicious for the drinkers. And then he says and rivers of purified honey. You drink honey on earth also, right? You drink milk, right? You drink water. But how come you don't drink wine? No, you should drink wine. It's good. But don't drink the one which will intoxicate you. You see the difference? There's a difference. Huh? Aha. Uh -huh. So there's a difference. So don't go the one which the Amelie Shaitan is involved. No, there's a difference. Go with the one which your mind is clear. Don't go with the one which you would think to get you. So wine in general, God never said wine is haram. I dare any mushrik. I'll open the phone line. You call and let's see. So then he says, and they will have all fruits therein, as well as forgiveness from their Lord. It is like he who will be in the fire eternally uh, and will be made to drink magma as water and it will sever their intestines. Huh? Is it like he who will be in the fire eternally and will be made to drink magma as water and it will sever their intestine. Is it like that? No. So last one, I'm going to give you a verse. Then I end this part before I answer the next question. So this verse I'm going to give is found in Quran chapter 2, right? So let me see if I can put the screen on the screen here. Chapter 2, is it chapter 2 verse 13, right? No. Oh no, not this verse. Wait. Chapter 2 verse... Uh, bear with me just a second. <laughs> yes. Quran chapter 2, verse 25. Yeah. Chapter 2, verse 25. Now look at what God says in Quran chapter 2, verse 25. He says, and give good news to those who believe and do good deeds, that they will have gardens beneath which rivers flow. Whenever they are provided with some fruit as sustenance therefrom, they will say, this is what we were provided with before. And similar will be given therein, and they will have purified spou uh, spouses or mates therein, and they will be therein eternally. Right? So according to God, on the day of judgment, the things we have been given on earth, similar one, not the same, similar will be given there. So if the wine you are drinking here, it gets you intoxicated, the wine you are going to drink at God doesn't get you intoxicated. It is actually delicious for the drinkers. So just like now, I'm drinking a wine, but there's no alcohol inside. It's alcohol-free. It's written on it here. Alcohol-free. No alcohol inside. Okay. So now, let me move to the next question. Um, so, Sister Hannah is asking a question. She said what? Uh, what's, okay, like that one, I've already done that. She says, uh, Baba, what's the theory of abrogation in Sunnism? I know Allah mentions in chapter 2, verse 106, and 16, verse 101, but some Sunni scholars claim to know what they are. Is it possible to even know that information? Uh, this is this is a topic I address in one of my videos. I have a, a video on that that I addressed. But however, I can give some breakdown right now. In Quran chapter 2, verse 106, what they actually do is when they are given the breakdown, they use the word illa there, uh, which is which is not consistent with the structure of the Quran. So I'm giving you an example here. Let me put the verse on the screen. In Quran chapter 2, verse 101, always try to check the context also to, to give the analysis uh, precisely. That is 106, chapter 2, verse 106, right? Uh -huh. So we start here. Now God says, Ma nansakh min ayatin أو ننسها نأتي بخير منها أو مثلها. Then he says, ألم تعلم أن الله على كل شيء قدير. So God says, whatever we transcribe of of a sign or cause it to be forgotten, we bring one better than it or the like of it. 
do you not know that God is capable of all things? Now, God is saying whatever we transcribe of a sign. Now, there are two understandings to this verse. You can see on my page, I underlined the transcribed, the nansakh, and I underlined the word sign. We can be talking about the sign as a miracle, and we can be talking about the sign as a verse. But first of all, let's check it as a miracle. Now, whatever miracle you've seen God has done in the past, which is written in the, pre in the scriptures, God actually comes up and shows us another form of miracle in the Quran, which is actually better than the one before, or similar. But then, if we take it in the notion of a verse, the sectarians will always transcribe, uh, will translate the word nansakh as abrogation. But if there's abrogation, God will have used the word illa, except. So whenever God uses a negation in the Quran, he brings the word illa. Whenever there's a negation from the beginning, he brings the word illa. But in this verse, there's no illa because it's not a negation. There's no negation. Nakra, no. There's no negation here. So whatever we transcribed of a sign. Now, I give this footnote here. How the transcription has been used in the, in the Quran. Quran chapter 45 verse 29. You will see the word transcribe. Quran chapter 7 verse 154. You will see transcription in the Quran. That same root word has been used. Now, whatever we transcribe of a sign or cause it to be forgotten. Listen carefully. We bring one better than it or the like of it. Do you not know that God is capable of all things? Now, if you check the verse carefully, you can see God is talking to the prophet. When he said, do you not, not know that God is capable of all things? He's talking to the prophet, right? Okay, now, when you continue to 107, do you not know that to God belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth and you have no guardian, no helper besides God? Verse 108. Or do you intend to ask your messenger as Moses was asked before? What do the people ask Moses? Is it not mirac for miracles? The people of Moses, they were always asking Musa for miracles. Do you, do you get the point? That's what the people of Moses kept doing. Show us God. Bring us God. Uh, what did God say we should do? Which one? Which, which one should we slaughter? Which color? How? What? Do you understand? This is the, what the people of Moses kept doing. They needed miracles for everything. So that's the people of Moses. So now God, if you read the context of chapter 2 verse 106, you get the gist that we cannot only isolate it talking about a, a verse. That verse can be in the point, the position of a sign, like a miracle. So when you read the context coming, you understand. But because if it is a verse, there has to be illa. If it is illa, then yes, there's there's a negation. That's an abrogation, meaning it has to be abrogated in the previous scripture. But here God is talking about we do not trans well, whatever we transcribed. Because remember. Quran chapter 7, verse 154. I'm going to show you an example. Now, in Quran chapter 7, verse 154, pay attention. And when the anger was silent from Moses, he took the tablets. And this tablet, I'm going to show you another verse where God wrote for him on the tablet. He took the tablets and in their transcription, Nuskhatiha uh, was guidance and mercy for those who reference their Lord. You understand? In that transcription. Now, in the same chapter, if I take you to Quran chapter 7, verse 1, let's take uh, 1 for 144, right? Uh -huh. 144, it says. He, he, God said, Oh Moses, indeed, I have chosen you over the people with my messages and with my speech. So take 
what I have given you and be of the grateful. Now, so then verse 145. And we wrote for him on the tablets of all things as preachment and elaboration for all things. So take them with strength and command your people to take the best of it. I, God, will show you the home of the immoral. So when you check the tablets, in Quran chapter 7, verse 154, when Moses was angry, he picked up the, the tablets. Those tablets, nushatiha, in the transcription of those tablets that Moses had, it is God who wrote for him. Because chapter 7, verse 145, God says, and we wrote for him on the tablets. So the tablets Moses had, it has the transcription. The nushatiha is a trans to transcribe. Now, so in Quran chapter 2, verse 106, if you take it in two ways, uh, in two different forms to understand the verse, whatever we transcribed of a sign or caused it to be forgotten. Are you with me? So that is why when you take the Quran, the translation I made, I put the footnotes there. The reference is there, chapter 7, verse 154. If you look at it in the context, uh, in the in the context of a verse, it still add up. It doesn't mean God abrogated something. He transcribed for Moses. So whatever we transcribe of a sign or of a verse, or caused it to be forgotten, because Moses, God, Moses, what Moses had, everything was written, but some of the things have been forgotten. Where are they? We don't have it. So the Quran came to confirm some of the things. Because right now, if you ask anybody, where are the tablets of Moses? Who has it? Tell me. Who has it? Who has it? Nobody. So whatever we transcribed of a sign or of a verse, if you look at it both ways, there is no abrogation there. Wallahi lazim. Why will God say something and abrogate? <laughs> Why? Abrogation what? So God made a mistake. Because, look, when we went to school, the only way a student will clean or will erase what he has written is when there's a mistake. So what do you mean abrogation? Huh? To cancel? Cancel what? The next question says, Baba, how come Musa name stays the same? How come Musa name stayed the same? Yes, when you go through the Quran, like I'm telling you, it is that the structure of the name the said prophet has. With Musa, imagine say Musin, Musun. Just imagine that. It can change the structure of the name. It, it can mean something else. You understand? So names like Musa remains the same. The names that when the ending has this Tanwin and so on can change the structure of the name, God lets it stay the same. I give you the example of Elias. God spoke about Elias in the Quran, in Quran chapter 37. I think verse 170 or 60 is coming down. He says, Salamun ala Eliasin. But when you go to the Quran, he's called Elias. But in that verse, he says, Eliasin. It is one of the unique ways God that, uh, talks in the Quran. And the way he utilized names. Take the name of Ibrahim, alayhi salam, in the Quran. In se several verses, it has been written differently. Sometimes you see the Yai Madda, and sometimes you see something like a, you know, a sign there. You understand? It is the, just the, the beauty and the structure of the Quran. It doesn't actually isolate and mean that, oh, that this name is not the name of an entity and that name. Even God himself, Allah, it has different endings at the end. <clears throat> In some verses, you see Allahu. In some verses, you see Allaha. You say, you say Allahi. You understand? It doesn't affect. We just need to understand the structure of the Quran other than letting some certain uh, rules and grammatical instances influence our understanding of the ways of God. I hope you get the point. Okay. <clears throat> so this brother is asking a question. Uh, Muhammad al Wangara says, please, what, which part of the Quran explicitly 
uh, said or says Muslims are forbidden to sell or eat pigs. I just mentioned that. Eating the meat of pig is forbidden. Quran chapter 6 verse 145. I mentioned that already, right? But selling pig, God never talked about selling pig being haram. Neither is selling uh, wine. God never says selling wine is haram. I'm going to give you an example. Let's take the notion of Joseph, Prophet Joseph, right? I'm going to give you an example, right? Let's take Prophet Joseph. If you go to Quran chapter 12, verse 36, Prophet Joseph, if you are working in a shop where they sell wine, if you are working in any place where they sell wine, please keep your job. You are not, you are not guilty of anything. <laughs> I'm serious. I just showed you in the Quran Wine on its own is not haram, but however, if you are a believer, avoid drinking it or avoid taking it. God says avoid it, but he never said wine is haram. Listen carefully. If it is haram, let me show you a problem here. Yusuf, alayhi salam. Yusuf, Quran chapter 12, verse 36. And two young men entered the prison with him. One of them said, indeed, I have seen myself squeezing wine. And the other one said, indeed, I have seen myself carrying bread above my head, from which birds were eaten. Inform us of its interpretation. Indeed, we see you, Joseph, are of the benevolent. Now, concerning the wine that this person has seen that being squeezed in the dream, Joseph is going to give them the interpretation. Now, assuming if this was haram, Joseph will tell him that that job you are going to do, don't do it. So I'm going to give you the clarification to that. So now we go to verse 41. In verse 41, oh, let me put it on the screen. I didn't put it on the screen. Sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. I didn't put it on the screen. Uh, okay, let me start from 1236. In 1236, I read the verse again. And two young men entered the prison with one of uh, uh, with him, that is Joseph. One of them said, indeed, I have seen myself squeezing wine. And the other one said, indeed, I have seen myself carrying bread above my head. From which beds were eaten. Inform us of its inter interpretation. Indeed, we see you are of the benevolent. Now, when we go to verse 41. Oh, my two prison mates. This is Joseph speaking. As for one of you, he will then give drink of wine to his master. But as for the other one, that he will be crucified and the birds will eat from his head. The matter regarding which you both sought for my legal opinion has been decided. Okay. So now we can see clearly here that Joseph was giving the advice, at, uh, interpret, interpreting the dream by telling both of them, one will work at his master by serving the wine, while the other one will be crucified. So assuming if it was haram for the other one to work by giving wine to the master, Joseph will tell him, you see that job you are going to do, it is haram, don't do it. Stop it, don't do it. Throughout the chapter, chapter 12, read it till down. Nowhere did Joseph told him, hey, that work is haram. Don't give your master wine. You are going to hell. What do the mushriks do? They will say, oh, when you are working in the wine shop, you are also guilty. You are going to hell. But here, Asim al is telling you, I drink beer, 2%, 3%. And he tells you the beer is from Saudi Arabia. So what do you say about, about that? Does he mean go, all of Saudi Arabia, they are going to hell? <laughs> Uh, because there's two percent, three percent over there in Saudi Arabia, and Asim Halakim just said it. He said, "I drink beer, and I'm proud of it." So it means Saudi Arabia is going to hell. Huh? Are you telling me Cristiano Ronaldo is not drinking beer in Saudi Arabia? Hello. So the ones who are serving beer to him, they are going to hell. Huh? What? Hello. What? So the football players who are there, they, they don't drink beer, right? They drink at their house. Are they going to hell? So it's Saudi Arabia because Saudi Arabia gives them beer. So Saudi Arabia is going to hell. So you see how indoctrinated people are in, in religion. Mm? They don't think straight. 
God is speaking clearly in the Quran. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So if you are a believer, you are asking me, can I drink alcohol? God is telling you, you are a believer, avoid it. Don't ask me too much questions. Avoid it. Avoid it doesn't mean it's a haram. Let, leave people who want to drink to drink it. Let them enjoy. What is your problem? Okay, let's go. Um, let me see the last question, right? The last question, somebody is asking, MW content. I don't know what you are trying to ask here. You says, he says, are you a messenger? Now, you just need to ask, de define, understand the definition of a messenger and the context of a messenger when you are speaking. Am I a messenger in the sense of Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Isa, Prophet being Prophet's messengers? No, I'm not. I'm just a messenger of the messenger. Now, when we say a messenger of the messenger, meaning I take from the message of the messenger and I give it to the people. In that sense, I become a messenger, delivering a message. Do you get the point? So in the Quran, the word messenger has been utilized a lot. So I'm going to give you an example. So when we say messenger, we've seen in the Quran, a lot of people have been tagged as messengers, but it doesn't mean they are messengers of God directly. There's a difference. Huh? So let me explain here. Now, when it comes to these notions, some people misunderstand when we say messenger, they understand, they misunderstand the, the notion of what a messenger is and who a messenger is, right? Now, Jibreel alayhi salam is a messenger of God. He is Rasul. This Rasul, he brought the message to the human messenger. So Muhammad also alayhi salam is a Rasul. So God sent Jibreel as a Rasul, chapter 2, verse 97. And he brought the Quran to the messenger. And this messenger is now going to send to us. So now I've received the message of God. Now, if I take the message of God and I'm delivering it precisely as it is to my people by the inspiration of God, that makes me a messenger also. So I'm a messenger of the messenger, but not a prophet. Because when you tell the sectarians you are a messenger, this is what they say. Oh, he's saying he's a prophet. Because understanding, perspective is the key. When you understand the perspective in which a person is speaking, you can understand the context of what they are saying. Do you get my point? Aha. Uh -huh. So now, let me give you the examples of a messenger in the Quran. So for instance, when we take, uh, let me take this. Uh, yeah. Yeah. When you go to Quran chapter, chapter 12, verse 50, that is Surah to Yusuf, right? So we go to verse 50. So now, this is what happened. In chapter 12, verse 50, and the king said, bring him to me. But when the messenger came to him, he said, go back. Now listen. The king sent a messenger. Now, when you read in the Quran, what you see is a Rasul. This a Rasul doesn't mean the messenger of God. The king sent a messenger to Joseph. The king, the king, he sent a messenger to Joseph. And this messenger was called a Rasul. But if you are talking to somebody in the context of Islam and you say a Rasul, he's thinking you are talking about Muhammad, alayhi salam. But whilst forgetting, Jibril himself is also a Rasul. He's a messenger. So you have to understand in the context in which a person is speaking. So Quran chapter 12, verse 50, a Rasul. And also when uh, Suleiman sent, uh, when the queen of Sheba sent a messenger to Suleiman in Quran chapter 27, verse 35, right? The queen of Sheba sent a messenger with a gift. And we call it uh, Mursilatun. Mursilatun. She sent Mursaloon. She sent a Mursilatun by via the means of Mursaloon, messengers, right? So now, in the context in which you are speaking, when you take Quran chapter 33 verse 39, listen what God says. God says, Allazina yuballiguna risalati allahi wa yakshawnahu la yakshawna ahada illallah. Then he says, wa kafa billahi hasiba. Those who convey 
the messages of God while fearing him. Such will not fear anyone but God. And sufficient is God as a reconner. So in this context, if I'm conveying the messages of God to the people, in that context, you are classified as a messenger of God. But it doesn't mean you are appointed just like the prophet Muhammad, prophet Musa, prophet Isa, and so on. Do you get my point? I give an example again. So let's say I'm working for CNN. If I act for CNN and I take CNN's message in and out, I become a messenger for CNN. Do you get my point? I become a messenger for CNN, right? So if I'm calling people to the words of God, the Quran, and I'm actually conveying the messages of the Quran to the people, in that instance, you classify the person as a messenger because he's giving the message of God, not the message of Bukhari. You get my point? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> So, uh, can I tolerate any last question before I go? Let me see. Okay. Uh, oh. Unfortunately, I couldn't put my number for people to call. Let, let me see. I can put my number. If in case when somebody wants to call, the number is below the page. I can tolerate one or two callers before I go. That is the phone number there. If you want to call on the program, kindly, you're welcome. Yeah. Yes, there is a moderator actually. There is this Steven Seagal is, is disturbing. So he's been put on timeout. Uh, yes. Uh, anybody who wants to ask a question can, can actually call. Hey, David Gadus. My brother, I see you. Gadus, Naganka. Salam. Aha. Uh -huh. So please, I'm tolerating callers. I can. Pick up a caller, maybe one or two, before I go to TikTok. I'm going to TikTok after here, right? And that is where I'm going to meet the Mushriks. I know they will be joining on. So I'm willing to meet the Mushriks there. Uh, thank you very much, Baba said. Thank you. Balogun says what? Uh, Salam, Baba. Is there categories in paradise on the last day of judgment according to the Quran? Uh, you mean, is there categories in paradise? In paradise, there are categories, yes. I just, I just spoke about it in Quran chapter 56, right? Chapter 56, verse 13. You read up to verse 39 downwards. It tells you the three categories. And same, those going to the paradise, there's a, there's the elites. And then there is also the, the normal range, right? Uh -huh. So there are different levels. Just like in aeroplane, we have the VIP. Uh, there's business class, right? And then there's economical class. But you are all flying together. But some are, are having more comfortability than the others. Same in paradise. There are different zones and levels. Do you understand? Uh -huh. So that has been explained in Surah to Rahman, chapter 55. Try your best to read chapter 56, the whole surah, and read chapter 55, the whole surah. The, the, chapter 55 comes before 56, right? So when you read 55, read the whole surah, you see the levels of paradise. Then you read 56, then you understand more which are be, which people are, be, are going to be given the upper one and the down. You understand? There are different levels of paradise. Uh, Dean Ishmael says, got a question, Brother Shrive. So how many times exactly we should offer prayers for a day according to the Quran? It's three. Three like this, right? Only three. It is Salat al-Fajr, Salat al-Isha, uh, and Salat al-Wusta. Three. However, these two are constantly... Uh, in place, whilst the one is nafila, right? One is nafila. Uh, by the way, look at my hand. It's not a. It's not a. <laughs> it's not a fu sign. Please don't tell me I'm giving fu. Look at. Uh -huh, I'm not using my middle finger. Please. Uh -huh. So. Uh, 
Tutmu says, Salam brother, a brother here wanted to know about the mysterious letters that appear in the Quran in surahs like Baqarah and Maryam. They are just the signs of the book. If you read Quran chapter 27 verse 1, it gives you the gist of that, those verses, why it appears like that. Right? Uh -huh. So chapter 27 verse 1, let me put it on the screen. When you read chapter 27 verse 1, it says, then it says, wa it says, these are signs, they are symbols. They are symbols of the Quran. They are signature, I would say. The word ayat can be mean symbols, can mean signs. You understand? It has a lot of meanings. So they are symbols. When you see the ta sin, ya sin, alif la mim, uh, hami, they are just the signature of the Quran. Ever since we came, we, we, we came to this world, we've never seen a book like that, where it just starts with the initials and only letters giving you uh, a, a coded uh, language where you have to read something with that. We've never seen a book like that. So the Quran, it's unique on its own. Remember, God is not like a human being where he has to do his things like a human being. You understand? Somebody will say, how come verse 1 is just Alif, La, Me? What does it mean? Let the book explain to you. They are just the symbols. They are signs of the book. It's a signature. You understand? So that is why Surah to Baqarah will always have Alif, La, Me. It's a signature. Ta, Sin, Ya, Sin, Ha, Me. They are the signs of the book. Nothing special. Don't let anybody confuse you and say, hey, there's a special meaning. I'm going to tell you. I know the meaning. Uh, it means God is going to destroy the world tomorrow. Yeah. Quran chapter 16 verse 89. Kulli shay'in wa hudan wa rahmatan wa bushra lil muslimin. God has revealed the book as a clarification for all things. Nothing is left out. So everything God is talking about in the Quran, he has given us the clarification. Is there? You understand? Okay. Somebody is calling. Yeah, salam. Your name and where you're calling from. Uh, salam alaikum. My name is Emra from Netherlands. And I have a question about Wahid. You, have, you can pick up the... You have the question about who? Wahi. 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 Yes. Uh, okay, yes. sure. Uh -huh. uh, Ali, Ali Emra, uh, 124. Uh, My English is not so good. So sorry for that. Ali Emra. 124. 124. Uh-huh. What's your question? So uh it's mentioned about three thousand um, uh, so he got here uh Hawaii. Uh -huh. But we cannot find this any uh, any else in the Quran. You say you say he got so was, you say he got why he why he so he say in one hundred twenty four three thousand men like that yeah God help you but where 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 does it say it is why he that's the question is that a why he or no it's not a it, I, no I, no it it is not a why he he is telling them the possibility of what god can do he's inciting the believers just like god asked him to incite the believers to fight so it he is inciting the believers because god can help them by giving them that so in order to understand that With 3000 like it. exactly because he has already told him in chapter 8 that god is capable of supporting them with angels like that do you understand? Okay. Now, look, yes. look, look, let me show you something. Now, when you look from uh, uh, verse, verse 122, he says, Yes. No, no, sorry. Let me, let me start from 121. He says, also, when you, you, you Muhammad, uh, alayhi salam, when you departed from your family to assign the believers the stations to fight, and God is hearing on omniscience. 122, when two factions among you had intended to what? Tefshala, tefshala, that is to fail. But God was their ally. And so let the believers rely on God. Now, 123, and God has suddenly yes. granted you victory at Badr while you were subdued. Therefore, 
Beware of God so that you may be thankful. Now, 124. When you, Muhammad, said to the believers, is it not sufficient? Now, you see what he's, is, 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 what we call it is, is uh, you are inciting them with a, with a good message, whereby you are trying to let them know that God can help. So he says, is it not sufficient for you that your Lord should reinforce you with 3,000 yes. of the angels coming down? So it is not like it's a why he come in, but he's telling them so that the believers can have the courage. Okay. You understand? Yes. Uh -huh. So now if you check 125, it answers, the argument, uh, it answers everything clearly. 125 said, certainly, if you endure, meaning if they are patient, and become pious, and they come to you, that is, the disbelievers come to you from this anger of theirs, your Lord will reinforce you with 5,000 of the angels by marking. So meaning, if, so it's a condition. Okay. Yes, it's a and condition, it's not a why. 3,000, 3,000 and the 5,000. It's coming from so the prophet, meaning, he, the prophet was only saying that to incite the believers as a, as a, as a point of uh, encouragement. Okay, and the mother of Musa get also a wahi, so um, she was not a rasul. Yes, you so can. You, you, you can have wahi if you even if you are not a rasul. Yeah. And hawaris, hawaris. I, I, I don't know how you say that in English, but uh, the hawaris got also uh, wahi. Yes, Quran chapter five, verse one hundred and eleven. That is the disciples of. Uh, Isa, that they are the disciples. Yes. Yeah, they got yes. inspiration. Okay. Yes. If you are a believer, you can get inspiration. Let me let me give you an example. In Quran chapter okay. chapter uh, in Quran chapter forty two, verse fifty one, Suratul Shura, right? It says, "Wama kana li basharin, an yukallimahu lahu illa wahi." That is wahyan. أو من وراء حجاب أو يرسل رسولا فيوهي بإذنه ما يشاء إنه علي حكيم. So he says, and it is not for a human that God should speak to him directly, meaning to speak to him, except by what? Are you listening? Yes, yes, yes I'm listening. Except by wahi. So, speaking to a human being by why he doesn't necessitate that the person is a prophet. The mother of Musa, alayhi salam, God spoke to her by inspiration. Uh, the the uh, the bees, even the bees, so, uh, the Nahal, Surah to Nahal, chapter 16, verse 67. Even the bees, they have inspiration from God, right? Well, that's very interesting. Yes. yes. Uh -huh. So, why he is not only limited to prophets, no. So got the prophet then and, and another wahis. Uh, we we are all the wahi they he got this in the Quran. No, they are they are different versions of wahi, right? Look, uh, in Quran chapter chapter six verse one hundred and twenty one, even even shayatins they give wahi. Do you know that? No. Okay. If you go and to they Quran, are influencers. That's what I know then. Okay. So they whisper, they whisper in your ear. Okay, when we say la yuhuna ila awliya, when you go in the shayatina la yuhuna ila awliya ihim. Do you know about that verse? Quran chapter 6, verse 121. I have it on the screen. Yes, I'm reading now. Aha. Uh -huh. So even the Chayatin, they, they give inspiration. Mm. Yes, they inspire. But inspiration from God is different. Because God will never inspire you to do evil. He gives inspiration for you to, to bring about good things. That's just the difference. Yes. When the devils give you inspiration, they are only giving you inspiration to cause you what? To become a mushrik. Just like the Hadithians, Mushriks, yeah, and so on. Yes. That, that's where they get their inspiration. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. you. So you're welcome, brother. Thank you for your time. Okay. Salam yes, alaikum. You yeah, salam.
Uh -huh. So ladies and gentlemen, I've done two hours, 30 minutes. I guess this is enough. Uh, what I'm planning to do is um, for one week, when I do a program, the next week I'll do Q&A, question and answer. I give people a chance to ask questions. Then the following week, I'll do a full program, right? Then the next, I'll do question and answer like that. I'll be doing like that so that at least people will get a chance to, to ask the necessary questions they want to ask and, uh, and get the... Uh, the right answers they need. Huh? Uh, BMHC7 says, where did you get shield from uh, 3124? All I will say is try to understand how English language works. Understand English comprehension and English grammar. You are translating from a language to language. There's a difference between transliteration, translation, and interpretation. If you're translating from a language to language, you need the expertise for it to understand how things can make sense in another language. So don't just think that the should came out of nowhere like a magic. You understand? That's why sometimes somebody says something and says, let it make sense to me. You understand? Mm -hmm. uh, somebody, somebody is trying to call. Let me see. Don't call me a direct call. If you're calling, call via WhatsApp, please. Don't call me direct call. If you're calling, call via WhatsApp. I can see somebody's calling direct call. Don't call me direct call, please. Call via WhatsApp. I'm moving to TikTok. If you have any question, follow me on TikTok, then we can uh, talk about that. Uh, thank you very much, Baba Sidi. Now go to Korea. Uh, thank you, Tariq Ayub. Uh, thank you, uh, Dean Ishmael, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Sorin Bed, thank you. Salam to you. Um, uh, Tazi XD, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Tutmus, thank you. Um, we have uh, S. Faraj, thank you to God bless you. Allah bless you for this. Uh, Balogun Olayinka, uh, Jibril, I see you. Thank you. Balogun, thank you. Uh, Maslan Osman, thank you for your time. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Two hours, 30 minutes is enough. Uh, Mishizi Sniper, uh, thank you all. I appreciate your support, your presence. However, I'm moving to TikTok. I might stay there for like two hours before I go. Thank you very much, Labarana. I appreciate that. I'm coming to TikTok. So please, don't go. You are going to enjoy the show. I think the Mushriks are around. So I'll be coming there. Right? Uh, thank you very much. Liman Imran and Aganka. Salam, bro. I appreciate that. Thank you. Hey, uh, Munir. Yes, God willing, let's hope I have enough energy to speak. Huh? We have to talk, yeah, inshallah. So, Abu Thomas, thank you very much, guys. Thank you, I appreciate that. God bless you all. Uh, those who I mentioned your name, those who I didn't mention, Abdul Salam, uh, Abdul Samad, I know you'll be watching, Abdul Salam, uh, Nur, Nur Dean, you're watching. Uh, those who I mentioned your name, those who I didn't mention, I apologize, uh, uh. For, for for not remembering to mention all of you i appreciate your presence thank you very much for being present for supporting this sister natalia i know you'll be watching somewhere sister diana i know you'll be watching later uh all the sisters sister rashida sister jamila uh sister rafia uh, uh isa shamu thank you uh hey gadus gadus my tiktok name is the same name i'm using bush 2g9 baba Shwipe. The correctional officer, the same name I have here, the same one, David Godus. Aha, uh -huh. that's my lovely, lovely brother from from uh, Ghana, also, uh, based in Germany. Now, Nara Power, yes, thank you very much, Nara Power. I'm moving to TikTok. That is where I normally interact with people one on one, right? We go one, -on -one, especially the Sunnis and the sectarians, so that you get to understand how it is that Baba Shrib is being challenged, and I answer questions, right? Because people think I only do lectures and I'm running away from questions and I'm running away from interactions. Look, Baba Ushaib is never running away from any scholar you have. Wallahi. So far as he's not following the ways of God. I'm available. They should come. We are going to go head, head on, head on. Huh? You know, just like the, 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 the how do you call it? The, the lamb or the sheep uh, does to each other. They, they go. In Ghana, we call it karu, karu. <laughs> I'm waiting for them on TikTok. Let them come. And I, I promise them I'm going to make them famous also. 
So let them come. I'm there. <laughs> so thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Sab, everyone, I appreciate it. Abu Yusuf, tell us salam to you all. Uh has had or uh, Ola Wale. Yes, that that typically Nigerian Yoruba, of course. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Dangana, I appreciate that. Till we meet again next week, God willing, I will say peace out on Facebook and YouTube.